guys, welcome to episode 16 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome to the podcast, and thanks so much for joining me this week. I love chatting with you about knitting and yarn and other crafting, so let's get started. I actually first want to update you guys on my secret knitting project that I was working on last week. Um, secret from everyone, or for from only one person from my sister who was expecting, and that was the starlight blanket. And I say was because I am no longer knitting it, unfortunately. Uh, sorry to my sister, but <laughs> I just had several issues that I will explain here. Um, I got started with it. Um, I liked all the colors at the beginning. And as I started knitting, I think I got into about row 10, 12, and I really didn't like the contrast of colors. The border was really beautiful, kind of a, um, I'm gonna say, a kind of a mid-tone green, maybe a tealy green color. Um, and I loved that color, that was great. But I had also chosen a mid-tone to a little bit darker gray for the background. And when I started knitting that, I really didn't like the two together, especially that large of a project that was going to have those two colors. So I just didn't feel like there was enough contrast with it. And so there was the color issue, which I could have I could have done. The more I knit though, the more I just, I really wasn't feeling it. I wasn't, ha I wasn't gaining joy from it, which you should do with knitting. And my knitting time uh, with all of my kids and my life, I just have a really short amount of time to knit every day. So I always wanna make sure that it's something that I really enjoy. That being said, um, another thing that I was having issues with, and all of these, I, I just want to preface this, all of these are my own issues. The pattern itself is so adorable. And so if you are looking for a really cute uh, baby gift, check it out because it really is cute. There's more information on last week's podcast. Um, I'll put some information in the uh, description below in my show notes as well. But oh, one thing I was really having trouble with and... I think some other people were also having uh, issues with is that the chart um, for the pattern was very, very small. So I have fairly good eyesight, but I was, the print was so tiny. I was having a problem seeing where I was supposed to be. And the only way that I could remedy that, that I could think of was either get a magnifying glass and actually go along the chart and read it or copy and you know blow up the chart and so I had this giant chart to work with. I didn't feel like doing either of those things and uh, so there was there was that issue with the chart. Um, the third thing that I had an issue with with I, I didn't even notice this until I started knitting is that the uh, pattern or the design on the blanket was actually intarsia and not stranded knitting. And I have never done a project in intarsia and I'm totally someone who will jump into new concepts and new techniques. That's no problem for me. I just really don't feel like learning it. Um, I don't feel like learning it right now. Um, so I think the reason that it is, uh, or it does use intarsia is because it's lots of different chunks of colors, but then also it's kind of supposed to be not, it's not supposed to be a double sided project, but because you are going to see the other side of the blanket, I don't think stranded knitting would be the best option. So, um, on Ravelry, I thought when I started having issues with this blanket, I thought, gosh, maybe I should go on Ravelry and see if there's other people who have knit it. So I did, and what some people did is they actually would cut fabric out and stitch it to the back of the blanket. And this wasn't just one or two projects, several people did this. I was just 
thinking, no way, I'm not doing this. This is way more complicated than I thought it would be. So I think about that time is when I started thinking, you know what, I can use this yarn for something that I'm going to enjoy a lot more. Um, you know, I think it'd be a little different if my sister lived in a warmer climate and she really was going to need another blanket. I just don't think she really needs one. So I'm sorry if you're watching, I'm, I'm not making you a baby blanket. Uh, maybe I'll use the yarn down the line for uh, something that you'll use more, but it's just not going to happen. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. I am not going to have any more um, updates on the Starlight Blanket. Um, if you are looking for a cute pattern, though, it's really sweet. So um, check that out if you're into intarsia knitting and you can blow up a chart large, you know, on a copy machine or on your printer, you know, on your scanner. Oh goodness. So that just did not work out, but that's okay. It just freed up my knitting queue for the next, the next things. And, um, I actually am going to start a new project. So I'm very excited to tell you about that, but let me show you what I've been working on already first. So I have um, still I'm still working on my daughter's uh, marled zippity raglan sweater, which is what I'm calling it because um, that's what it is. And I am really far on the sweater. It is really coming along. I think I am pretty close to the ribbing on the bottom. I think I'm going to rib maybe. I'm thinking about two and a half inches. Um, yeah, I wanted to do a good sized rib at the bottom. And this is, I'm knitting this in a size six. So um, it is really quite roomy. I love the colors though. I don't know, it might be blowing out a little bit. I think the colors are really, really pretty. They're going to match my daughter's personality so much. And these are actually um, two strands of yarn, of fingering weight yarn held together. Let me show you them. This is um, Leaving the City. That's the first one. And the second is Saturn. So those two together are what I am knitting with and they look so cute together. Just that cheerful yellow. I know it's blowing out right now, but um, they look so, so pretty together. And I actually just dyed up a, a batch of this. So that will be available on next week's update. It's so pretty. I think it's just super, super pretty. So I am loving this and I think I'm going to use a uh, minty green with it for the neckline and for the rib and probably for the cuffs as well. Um, I do need to weigh how much yarn I have left though because I'm thinking, you know, I was thinking eh, maybe I can knit the whole sweater in both of those and I don't think so. I think that if it was a smaller size I probably could get away with it but um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. So I may need to use a different, uh, different color for the sleeves. I don't know. I'm thinking if I maybe mix a similar variegated color with the Saturn, it won't be as noticeable, but I'm not really making this sweater to be, like I said, I know I said in another podcast, it's not a refined sweater. It's not anything fancy. It's just very utilitarian. Like it's cold in the house, here's a sweater <laughs> or whatever. So it's just supposed to be fun and um, we'll see how it how it comes along. But yeah, it's nice to have just a stockinette pattern to work on. I don't really have to think about it. Um, I do have to say with the two strands held together, it is not as smooth as knitting with one strand. So. Um, I just started a new project and it's using worsted weight yarn um, and I couldn't believe how smoothly it's knitting along. I mean, it's just smooth, smooth. Um, this sweater, not so much. And I think it's because of the two strands. And so it's a uh, mindless stockinette right now. And actually the pattern is very well written. I'm really, really enjoying it. 
Um, so it's not the pattern at all. It really, I think, is just the two strands held together. Um, oh, I should say that the pattern itself does not call for two strands. It just calls for, you know, a standard one strand of yarn. So that's my own modification to the pattern. But I thought it was kind of fun. It was cute. I had um, the two yarns I'm using actually were, I think they were mistakes. You know, a dye splatter on this, the yellow or, you know, the Saturn um, or something. I know that they're, I couldn't stock them because of some errors. So um, I'm glad to be using them. They're totally, I love the colors. I love knitting with them. So it's been a really fun project so far. But let me show you my new project that I'm working on. So I just, I, I'd had a couple of new projects um, kind of in my mind that I wanted to do. And so I cast on one and actually dyed a new color for one um, that I am loving. So the new um, project I'm working on is the Hipster Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And when I saw um, Tracy from the Grocery Girls podcast, she had made one and it was just stunning. I mean, it, it was beautiful on her. Um, it was a beautiful, vibrant red and just have a nice worsted weight shawl in with an interesting stitch pattern and and whatnot. I'm sure you guys have seen it. It's very popular. And if you haven't, check it out because I'm it's. I just started it last night. It's really uh, quite small. It's kind of a baby shawl right now. Um, but wow, I'm just loving it. I love the color I'm using. And yeah, so there's not a lot to see, but this is a new color I've actually been working on for quite a while, or I've had an idea for it. And um, I just wanted like a really, beautiful vibrant blue not um not a navy blue um i really wanted a blue with um i guess pink undertones this really is on the purple side of blue which i would say that i'm not a purple person but i feel like i'm using more and more purple <laughs> or things that are uh close to purple so i'm just gonna stop saying that maybe i'm more of a purple person than i think but I love this yarn. I think it's really um, vibrant and just really, really pretty. So I'm so happy with it. I'm so happy with how squishy this is. I actually um, am knitting it on a size eight needle, which is, let's see, in millimeters, it is a five millimeter needle and it is just super, super squishy so far. Usually I size down. I've told you guys I size down a needle because I'm a loose knitter, but this is so what I needed right now. I was feeling a little, after the Starlight Blanket episode, I was just feeling really, just a little down about knitting. I don't know, I just wasn't, I didn't have any, any, uh, on the needles that I was really really excited about so um, I knit so much for other people too that sometimes I need to knit for myself and that's okay you know um, so yeah I'm really excited about my little baby shawl for now and um, I'm excited to share progress with you because this is just you know when they say flying off my needles it really is I mean I really cast on last night and I think I did this in an hour maybe I mean this it's been really fast and really fun so yeah super happy with that oh and I should say I don't have a name for this color I hope to um stock it someday but I don't have a name for it yet so we'll just see see what kind of inspiration hits me for a name <laughs> And then this is what I get for not writing show notes. I never write show notes until after the fact. I only write notes about show notes about what I've talked about actually on the podcast. So uh, that's what I get for this. But I actually do have two finished objects. It's amazing. But I 
knit two beanies from my Western Sky Knit Solar Flare yarn. And this is the first one. And this is, um, oh, this is just such a cute little hat. I actually, I don't think I've even woven in the ends yet. Um, I kind of forgot about these actually. Um, but these were so, so fast, so fast. Um, I don't have a, I mean, I just kind of made up a pattern for these. That's usually do I, what I do when I make knit hats, um, unless it's a more intricate uh, hat. But I'll, um, I'll try and remember to type these up and just put it down in my show notes in case you guys are interested in knitting up your own vanilla beanie, because that's kind of what it is. Very, very vanilla, nothing exciting about it. Just a two by two rib and stockinette and then for the increases, I just did them equally around. I think I did a, I think I did a slip slip knit uh, decrease. I think that's what I did. Or no, that's not true. I did a knit two together because that's faster. <laughs> so this one is going to fit my toddler and um, with definite room to grow. It's not too tight on her. And I just think that's so pretty. But I was um, kind of excited because I knit a larger size too for my, um, I guess, elementary age daughter. And um, she is, I mean, her head size isn't too large. So this is, this would fit maybe like, a, yeah, elementary school aged or Maybe even like middle school. I think that once you get into middle school though, that's kind of an adult size, but whatever, I digress. But I was really excited to show you, this has some really amazing pooling on it. Totally unintentional. And I think this is just such a fun hat. I hope you guys can see this. This pooling right here is just like, wow, I love it, love it, love it. I mean, sometimes pooling looks weird. I love how this pulled. And then look at that on the back. Wow. That's so, so fun. And um, I wanted to show this specifically because I know when I was um, a newer knitter, you know, people would talk about pooling or alternating skeins. And I just was like, whatever. I don't know what that means. You just kind of, at least I did, I just kind of glossed over it. But this is what it means. <laughs> so sometimes when yarn is dyed a specific, just a certain way, sometimes the colors line up together and um, sometimes it's unintentional, sometimes it is intentional and it makes a really neat design. But these two are from the same skein, they're just knit in different sizes. So um, this is always a really good thing to have in mind with hand dyed yarns please alternate skeins if you don't want pooling <laughs> because um, things will pool in the most unusual ways. I know a lot of you know this, but if there are maybe some newer knitters out there, this will save you for, from some possible heartache, especially if you're knitting a sweater or a larger pattern, always alternate skeins. Um, I usually do it I don't knit, I don't alternate every row to be honest just because it's faster. Um, I usually do every other row. So I usually do two rows with one skein and then do two more, but something like a hat, I don't alternate. And if it pools, it pools. And, uh, it's just such a fast knit that it really doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. So anyway, I'm really excited about those. I think I'll add some, um, palms on top just that I make myself out of yarn. I actually, you know what, I didn't weigh how much yarn I have left, but I'll just show you. I have that much left, and so we'll just see how much I have for palms. This is really, really pretty too. Wow. You know, it looks, it looks so different caked up than it did in the skein. Um, honestly, I wasn't really blown away with it when it was in the skein. It, um, I thought it was pretty, but it just wasn't like my go-to. Now that it's caked up and now that I knit it, I think it's so pretty. So, um, so yeah, I'm really glad that I did this and, um, 
I'm not terribly good at Ravelry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not good at putting projects on Ravelry and that's probably why I haven't made a Pineapple Yarn or Pineapple Knits uh, Ravelry group yet because I've just, I just never get around to it. Maybe someday I will, but um, hopefully I will put this on Ravelry soon. I'll put all the weights for you guys. I will maybe even type up just a little pattern in my notes and uh, leave it, but I'll definitely put it in the show notes below. Okay, so um, that is what I have for knitting currently, but I have two more projects that I am so excited to talk about. Um, the first one is I've actually purchased, printed out, and I have ready. I almost have the yarn ready, but um, I'm still finalizing some things for the throwback sweater by Andrea Mowry, and it is a super cute worsted weight yay worsted weight sweater worsted weight means fast which i am really all about these days and um it's gonna be really really cute i'm excited to do it i would love to hear if you guys are going to do it as well i think it's going to be pretty popular um her patterns tend to be fairly popular but um when i saw a worsted weight color work sweater i was all about that and um the only thing I'm a little nervous about is that it is a cardigan and it is not steaked. So I believe, I haven't read through the pattern yet, but I'm assuming that there is purling and color work, which I've never done, but I'm sure I'll survive. I'm sure I can figure it out. <laughs> so I will be um, casting on that soon. And the next one I'm really excited about is that Stephen West just announced that he will be doing a mystery knit along and he will be releasing the pattern, the pattern details this Friday, I'm pretty sure. So I am so excited, so excited about that because if you guys aren't familiar, Stephen West is kind of like the king, the king of MCALs. He is incredibly creative and exciting. I love mystery knit alongs, but his, I just, wow, I am, I'm so excited. It's kind of like Christmas when his patterns are released. So um, that's actually why I uh, put this shawl up today because this is from his mystery knit along from, uh, I wanna say two or three years ago. I can't remember. It's called Building Blocks. And basically you kind of, started off with some colors that you thought might look good and you just kind of went with it and this is a I think this was four colors so it was so so much fun to do that and um, yeah so I am really excited for both the throwback sweater and Stephen West's uh, mystery knit along I definitely will be casting those on so I need to get some other things done because as I always say I'm a monogamous knitter Maybe I'm veering away from that a little bit. I'm starting to get a little nervous. <laughs> I have a lot of things on the needles right now. So, um, so yeah, it's really good motivation to tie up some of these things and um, get some of them done. But um, yeah, so that's all I've been knitting lately. But I want to tell you really exciting news. <laughs> So I got my spinning wheel, exciting news, and um, I have not had this much fun with a craft for a really, really long time. I obviously love knitting, I have loved my blending board, but a spinning wheel has been a blast. I cannot even tell you guys, I mean, I'm probably speaking to the choir here, you guys are, you guys know, like, um, if you spin, it's so much fun. It's so relaxing and rhythmic, and um, I am really, really loving it. And I'm kind of wondering if like this time in my life, it is a bit stressful. My mind is kind of fried at the end of the day. I don't need a complicated knitting pattern. I don't want, really want a complicated knitting pattern. So um, yeah, I think knitting is just incredibly rhythmic and it's been really fun to learn and practice. Um, so let me tell you the details about it. I purchased a Kromsky Minstrel. I purchased it, I purchased it from the spinnery on Etsy. Um, the reason I chose the spinnery is because um, 
quite honestly, when I was researching spinning wheels, they were one of the first stores that popped up. And um, I reached out to Jody, who is the owner of the spinnery, and she was incredibly generous with her time and her knowledge. And I received amazing customer service from her shop. So um, yeah, I really, really appreciated that, especially as a newbie spinner. But uh, the Kromsky Minstrel is a beautiful wheel. It is a castle style wheel. So the actual wheel and um, all the little technical things about it, like the bobbin, the flyer, the orifice, they're all stacked up on each other. So the reason I wanted that is because of space and I didn't want anything too traditional. As a matter of fact, I didn't think I wanted anything even close to traditional when I went into um, looking at buying a spinning wheel. I kind of wanted a modern wheel. But um, the more I researched, I really liked the look of this wheel. Um, another thing I really liked is that it is double drive. Um, it's a double drive wheel. So you can do double drive. You can also do scotch tension. Um, I know probably some of this means nothing to you guys. I, you know, to some of you, it just it doesn't mean anything. But from my research, I think a double drive wheel actually... Um, I guess helps make your yarn more even and um, kind of helps with production if you're really trying to uh, spin a lot of yarn. So I could be wrong about those. That's just kind of what I've researched. And so that was kind of important to me. Um, I put an elastic uh, band, drive band for it instead of, I think it's hemp, the one that they give you. I just did that for ease of um, tension, making sure that I could start up pretty quickly. Um, so I guess just the uh, details about it, I received it very quickly. I was able to put it together quite easily using a um, YouTube video, actually two, and you can just find that if you're interested by searching for Kromsky Minstrel. And um, yeah, I was able to get up and spinning quite quickly. I have been stashing away a bit of fiber, so I've been having a really fun time. Um, I actually bought a stool for it too. The stool I bought is nothing to write home about. It's from Ikea, it was $5.99, um, and it fits perfectly for my height and you know the length of my legs everything it has worked out great so i was really happy to have made that purchase um yeah so let me show you what i have i have spun on the wheel so far i'm really proud of these um yarns that i have spun because i even though none of them are perfect I can see progress I have made through each one. And um, as long as I'm learning and, long, and as long as I'm improving with each project, whether that be knitting or spinning or, or sewing or whatnot, um, I call that a success. So this actually is the first yarn that I spun. And as you can tell, it is chunky, it is thick and thin. Um, I spun this from a braid. I just, uh, I dyed this braid actually. I think this is Coredale and it is four ounces. Um, I think it's really pretty, but I do have to tell you a funny thing that my, my daughter said, oh wow, mom, you spun art yarn, which this is not supposed to be art yarn. This was supposed to be, um, very uniform yarn. And it's not, but that's okay. That was the first, uh, the first one I spun, and um, I'll make something out of it. Maybe a small shawl or a hat or something. A couple of hats probably I could probably get out of it. But yeah, I think it's really, really pretty. That was my first. And then my second, I made out of some Rolex I purchased from. Um, oh goodness sakes. I think naturally nitty. I'll put it down here. 
Um, it's the colorway is called Northern Lights, and it's really pretty. So that's the next one I spun. It is much more uniform. It's again, it's not perfect, but uh, I think it's a bit more of a success. I suppose that's relative, but it's a bit more of the look I was going for. <laughs> I'll say that. So I think this was two ounces and um, I think it's really pretty. I was really happy about that. The strands are definitely thinner than the last one I did, um, which is kind of what I was going for. I just, I didn't want it as chunky. So um, this was the second one I spun. I actually did spin one more. And this was from the Rolags, I believe I shared with you last week, um, that I had made on the blending board with the fiber that Jody included with the blending board. So I think this is so beautiful. Again, not perfect, but um, I think it's more uniform and it is a thinner yarn. Um, so that's helpful. I tried with this one, um, I put a lot of twist into this one and then I twisted it quite a bit with the plying too. And I could definitely tell when I was done because when I skeined it up or when it was in the form of a hank, it was twisting on itself. So I had to block this quite well to um, make it behave basically, just have it hang straight. And um, so yeah, this one is so beautiful. I love this color. I think it's just, it's so pretty. And uh, yeah, been having so much fun. I don't know how much this one weighs. It's really quite small. It's not as, I don't think it's two ounces, but it is very, very pretty. And I'm actually in the midst of spinning up more. I think that the next one I'm spinning, um, well, it was the Rolags that I shared with you last week that are kind of, uh, they kind of look like light blues and greens and pinks um, that my girls and I had, um, I guess, put together on our blending board. Um, and it's coming along well. I've already spun half of it and I'm really working on uniformity right now. <laughs> That's what I'm working on, and um, I think that'll be about 50 grams, so that's coming along really well, and I can't wait to share that with you, but I've just been having so much fun with it. I could spin all day. I could sit at the spinning wheel all day and not get bored with it. It is incredibly relaxing, and um, I like that... I, yeah, I just kind of like that mindless rhythmic activity. It's really nice. So yeah, I am incredibly happy with the wheel itself. It has been easy to figure out. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, it's just sturdy. I feel like it's really well made. Um, yeah, all in all, super happy with it. And um I'm really excited to knit with some of my own hand spun yarn as well. And um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So that's basically what I wanted to show you guys this week. Um, I have been dyeing yarn this week and getting ready for the shop update, which is next Friday. And I will have some, um, some fun yarn in there. And I may be doing, I wanted to mention, I was um, talking about Stephen West's Mystery Knit Along. I may be putting together some kits for that. So if you guys are interested, I think it will probably be a blend of fingering white yarn as well as mohair. I'm not positive yet because the uh, pattern hasn't been released, but um, looking at some of his photos on Instagram, that is what I'm gleaning from it. So um, I'll keep you updated on that. But yeah, if you're interested in me putting together some kits, I would love to do that. Or if you are just interested in maybe a custom fade or anything, just let me know. You can contact me um, via my website, pineappleyarn.com. And I think that's all I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this podcast, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up down below, click like, or 
um, hit subscribe if you want to watch some more podcasts um, and be notified every time a podcast comes out. I usually podcast once a week. So yeah, thanks so much for joining me today and I hope you have an awesome day. Bye guys. Oh,